Well, let us listen to the Holy Gospel, a gospel according to our teacher, St. Luke, that the Apostle may his blessings be the solemn infant choice. Open, not you, open, so to you, open, or rooting. He sows for Christus, if she name, if not, he tongue, if you own of shiny, if you fap and not if he. From the Psalms of our father David, the prophet and the king, may his blessings be with us all. I mean, with you is dominion in the day of your power, in the splendors of your sins. I have begotten you from the womb before the morning. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, our Lord, God and Savior and King of our soul. Jesus Christ, the, the Son of the living God, to whom is glory pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The, the census first took place while Canarius was governing Syria, so all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with a child with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in, in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for, it, for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. <coughs> So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem 
and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. <coughs> Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all those who heard it, it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. And Glory be to God for Virgin Mary, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and our, uh, one God, amen. Today's gospel is filled with um, a lot of different, um, different persons. Um, there's St. Joseph, there's St. Mary, they're going to... Um, to give birth to their child, um, to, to Jesus, and there's those that are at the end, there's the shepherds. Um, today I actually want to focus on, on the shepherds. Uh, they're, they're rather intriguing to me. Um, why? Because they're outside the city, they're by themselves, they're, they don't have the most admirable job, they are not the most admirable um, you, you know, no, no one really looks at them very much. They, they tend sheep, which are usually not the brightest of animals. Um, and their goal is to protect them, to get them to a certain destination, to be with them. Um, I mean, no, nothing really special. Um, yet, here they were, um, doing their job, and an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And I think that in itself is a message, right? That, that they were of low reputation, not really high up on the status of social economic class. And an angel in himself appeared before them and prepared and told them a message. And not just any message, but what, what did he tell them? What did, what did the angel tell them? He told them, look, there's... The Messiah has been born. If you go to this place, if you go to an inn, you're going to find the Messiah. And like, let's think about that. These people have been waiting for the Messiah for thousands of years. And here, the angel appears to these lowly shepherds and tells them that the Messiah is going to be in, born in, not even an inn, not in a palace, not in anywhere glorious, but in... It's going to be in a manger with animals. Yet they believed. Yet they believed. Because of their simplicity, because of their faith, they were able to comprehend the message that God was sending them. And in that, in that, they said something which confirmed their faith. What did they say? Let us go and see that which has been made known to us. So right away they believed. Right away they believed. And they went. And what else did they do? They went and spread that message. They went and spread that message. So let's think about the job of a shepherd. So that they are, they are um, of very little reputation. Right? They're, not, they're not rich. They're not kings. They're not queens. They're not princes. They're not government. Um, their job is to keep those that they're watching safe from outside animals, from their own 
from their own persons, from themselves, from the other sheep, from disease. Their job is to feed the sheep um, and to get them to a particular destination. So based on that, who does that sound like? Who does that sound like? Who protects, who feeds, who nourishes? Yeah, Christ, right? So one of the, one of the titles for Christ is the Good Shepherd. And actually, the church, this icon right here, can be one of two things traditionally. So it could be Christ the Pentecostal on his throne, right? And that's who we have here. Um, or it could be Christ the Good Shepherd. Just those two things. Because the church reminds us of his power, of his government, governance in our life, and his, his, his mercy, his watching over us, his compassion. Um, and these, these lowly people ended up becoming the announcers of the nativity to all, to all men, to all men. Right? The angel came and told them, and then they went and saw, and then they went and proclaimed those things that they saw. And who else does the shepherd, does the, do the shepherds represent? Who do you think? Who else does the shepherd represent? Who shepherds? Who shepherds today? The clergy. The clergy. So the bishops, the priests. Right? And St. Ambrose is the one that said this. I didn't say this. St. Ambrose is the one that said this. I didn't. I didn't come up with this. He said, he said, if Mary herself learns from the shepherds, why do so many refuse to learn from the presbyters of the church? So wow, right? So you mean to tell me that St. Mary, St. Mary, the Theotokos, the mother of us all, the mother of God, the pure, the ever virgin, the second heaven, the second tabernacle, and the plethora of titles that we give St. Mary, she learned her faith grew from the shepherds. Her faith became stronger from what the shepherds had to tell her. Yes. Yes, St. Mary herself, St. Ambrose tells us that her faith was strengthened by the words of the shepherds. Who else? Who else shepherds? Parents, right? Parents? Parents and siblings. So who here has a brother or sister? No one? No one has a brother or sister? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of siblings here. How many people wish they didn't have any siblings? I'm just kidding. Don't don't answer that. Um, but as siblings, right? Especially as older siblings, and older siblings get a lot of flack because they have a lot of responsibility. But as older siblings, you're you're a shepherd to your younger siblings, and it gets hard, right? But let's think about maybe you don't know the views of younger siblings, right? Younger siblings look up to their older siblings like no other. And I know they do, we don't necessarily say that. I'm a younger sibling, but we don't necessarily say it all the time. But when we're kids, we look up to you guys as like you're, you're the coolest thing on earth. Um, and so parents have a tough time with kids. You tell them something to do and kids don't want to hear it, right? They think that their parents are old and not cool and they're living from like a thousand years ago. So siblings have the next, the next step up, right? They're cool. They're in, in their generation. And as hard as it is, um, younger siblings actually listen to you. And not, maybe not all the time. They'll probably throw up some fit and yell and stamp. But there's a lot of ways that you could be shepherds to your younger siblings, right? You guys have gone through the same school system. You know how hard it is to go through school in a Christian manner. So when, when you come home and you talk to your siblings or when they see what you're doing and they see everything, even if you think that they don't, they see everything. Everything you guys do, everything you guys say, all the texts that you guys do, what your time goes to, what your time doesn't go to, all these things are counted by your younger sibling. And you'll see it because when they start to get older, and start to come maybe a few years even younger where you are, they see the things that you've done and they want to do those things. So if you're on the computer all day, they want to be on the computer all day. If you're watching YouTube all day, YouTube is the coolest thing ever. That's what they're going to say. And I'm going to be on YouTube all day. If I'm on my PS4, my Xbox, that's what they're going to do. 
Believe it or not, I like, I'm, I'm not kidding. Um, but there's ways, there's ways, lots of ways that we can help shepherd those, those youth. Because when you say something, they want to listen. They, like deep down inside, they're, I don't mean in, in like a dictatorship type, type of way. You do this, you do that. Because no one wants to listen to that. But use your influence that you have with them in, in a Christian manner. Tell them about the difficulties of school and how to get through that in a Christian manner. Show them about church. Show them about God. Show them the things that you read, the things that you don't read. Pray with them. Be with them. Hang out with them. Even simple hangouts, just simple hangouts, going out to coffee, going out to get ice cream, whatever it may be. Those build up your relationships so that when it does come time to to say something tough, they'll listen. They'll listen. And like I remember, I remember that there were times where my sisters, my sister used to drive me to church all the time. And that, that was really important to me. And that was over 10 years ago, but I still remember those car rides that I had with my sister. And so those things help, help ground your siblings in the church. So maybe your parents don't come to church all the time. Be their ride. Bring them to church. Maybe the parents don't know the hymns. Teach them the hymns. Show them that the hymns are really cool in church because when you don't sing, they're not going to sing. It's very, very like traditional. What you do, they're going to do. They're going to be your little mini-me's as much as you like it or not. So use that. Use that. God gave you uh, a talent in being an older sibling. Use that talent for your benefit, for their benefit, for their sanctification. Um, and then younger siblings, right? So these older siblings have a lot of responsibility. And they do a lot of things that you don't necessarily know about, that we don't know about. And they probably get yelled at a lot more than we do for all the mischief that we get into. So just say thank you every once in a while, because they do a lot. They do a lot. Um, so thank you to my sisters um, and to all those that have shepherded me and shepherded you and... Um, May they forever be in the church, and may we always be grounded in the church. Um, and may the church be open to us throughout the ages and unto the end of ages. Amen. In the Father, Son, Lord.